Thanks everyone for coming. Um, it's a lovely day and you're sitting inside. Um, <laughs> But um, I think it will be a, a, a great day. So the first thing I want to um, uh, say is that we're obviously very uh, thankful to everyone who's um, participating as a speaker and as a sponsor. Um, so in particular, um, Polywrap, uh, Flock, Fala, Signature Ventures, Jensen, Indexing Company, Nevermind, Eterna, and Kaito, uh, all supporting that event. Um, and in the break, there'll be some food uh, as well. Um, I'll give a very short uh, keynote. It's not from 11.15 to 12, it's just 10 minutes now. And then we'll jump into the first panel. So Agents Unleashed, Supercharging the D Decentralized AI Stack is the title of this event. And I think today we'll at various points uh, touch on agents um, naturally. Um, so I want to uh, motivate a bit uh, this event focus. And the first thing I want to point out is that, um, let's see. the first thing I want to talk a bit about is the motivation potentially behind um, agents and, and a focus on, ag on agents right now uh, at this point in time. So if we uh, look at the web AI and UX, um, we can sort of maybe do a bit of pattern matching and it, uh, it's quite an interesting exercise um, in my opinion. So let's start with the web. We're obviously all familiar with this um, concept of read, write, own, which uh, uh, none of us obviously coined. Um, but one key thing here to notice that as we went from reading uh, websites to writing, interacting with applications like mobile applications and so on, um, reading doesn't go away, right? So these trends um, exist in parallel. But uh, recently with Web3, we have then this ability to own content, uh, own algorithms, uh, and so on. On the AI side, um, if you want to kind of have three phases, then maybe the way we can think about it is um, that initially, most of AI was very rules-based. And so people, um, engineers and researchers came up with sets of rules to define algorithms. And they were actually you know, uh, sophisticated um, uh, algorithms which came out of this, even chatbots. Some of the first chatbots are all rules-based. Obviously they had their constraints and then uh, this focus on learning emerged. So what you do there is you kind of swap things around rather than defining all the rules you take a pool of data and try to see if you can uh, infer the rules, so to speak. And now I think um, since some time, we're increasingly going into this agentic phase. So um, you can see this from headlines uh, from OpenAI, um, their latest research and uh, what we can hear from it kind of points in that direction. Um, and we can you know, see it outside uh, of that domain. Um, we'll see a lot of it today. And then the third trend, which is interesting to look at, is that of UX. Um, again, all these trends always um, uh, can, can coexist in parallel, um, but sort of new um, things uncover over time. So viewing is tightly related to read. An example is obviously you read a website, um, you, you view a website, you can look at a book, at art. Um, interacting could be playing a game like chess, but also um, you know, using a mobile application, a social applications. Most of the applications we've been using so far, and even I think ChatGPT is in this sort of domain because you're effectively interacting with the model right there and then, using it to get something done, and then you uh, move on. Now, um, we're still unsure whether outcomes is the right word, but increasingly we think there'll be more digital outcomes products. So. Uh, Real-world outcomes product is something like a washing machine. Um, you go to it, you turn it, you know, you configure it, and you go away, and a couple of hours later, it's washed or potentially even dried, depending how sophisticated your washing and dryer is. Um, in the digital space, agents can do this. Um, so rather than sitting there and negotiating your agent towards a goal, um, you know, initially you might give it 
um, some instructions, but over time you might not even have to give it instructions anymore because if it's an agent you own, it can acquire knowledge about yourself um, and sort of present outcomes for you which are desirable. And like, you know, I'm thinking here small and big, so, you know, anything health, wealth, um, social related um, uh, applies. Briefly, um, I'll also motivate um, why agents, sorry, I missed the point again. <laughs> Every time I say this, uh, how do I go back? Yeah, so if we look at these three trends, uh, then what we see at the end is that we have effectively this own agentic and outcomes, and that really points at these kind of autonomous agent systems, right? Where you have some form of ownership, it might be, um, you know, the substrate on which it deployed is many different um, um, technological ways of doing that, and we'll learn about that throughout the day. Um, but in, to a larger or smaller degree, all these systems will kind of generate outcomes for you, and you're sort of the owner of these systems. Um, where do I have to point this? Because it keeps not working. Okay. Right. Um, now, in terms of crypto, um, I think throughout the week there were a lot of fantastic uh, decentralized AI events, and what was interesting with a lot of them was that um, still there's this question whether crypto meeting AI or AI meeting crypto is actually something that makes sense. And I think it's an important question to ask because obviously specifically in crypto, it's often very hype driven and so kind of motivating it from first principle is important. Um, I do think we can very much motivate it from first principles. Um, so if you look at some of the benefits, and I'll go quickly here, is that obviously anything which requires KYC, um, usually there could be a crypto equivalent which, ha which has a leg up. So the simplest example is payments, but even like interoperating with APIs in a lot of centralized settings, you might have to first set them up um, and uh, you know, create some account. Um, in, in crypto, you can often very quickly permissionlessly do this. Ownership is a big piece. Um, so in different ways, uh, crypto obviously is all about people taking ownership of various parts of the data and the algorithms and processes. Um, platform risk, I think it's one of the biggest if you're actually building in the space. So if you build a GPT on OpenAI's platform, I mean, what are you actually doing, right? Like you have zero control over anything. Might have a short-term distribution channel, but you don't know whether you have a business tomorrow. Um, crypto can solve that. And then composability. Obviously, it's kind of hard to imagine that we'll have a centralized hub which offers sort of the interactions of all um, agentic systems on the web, right? Um, so again, being able to compose different um, systems um, on crypto rails um, seems uh, like it will happen. Now, one big theme of today um, is that we'll look at agents as daily active users of protocols, services, and chains. And that's why we have brought together really anyone and everyone in the decentralized AI stack, be it focused more on end-user applications uh, all the way over to infra and very different types of uh, infra. And I'm very excited to learn from everyone who's attending about their views on agents and how they can be users of those systems and how agents can be built better by leveraging these systems. Um, I'll leave you with a couple of questions. Um, so one question I have is, how can we accelerate the adoption of agents and unleash their full potential? Um, obviously, there's now a lot of momentum towards um, autonomous agents, AI agents. Um, I think there's tremendous opportunity here. How can we get there quicker? Um, then what role do agents have in growing the adoption of the entire decentralized AI stack? So I think particularly agents, when we think of them as synthetic users, um, present an interesting opportunity for bootstrapping for technologies which um, you know, solve problems along the decentralized AI stack. And so by working together and building agent use cases which leverage each other's technology, um, we can do that. And then what is the role of crypto for AI and vice versa? So I cut on this, 
Um, but I think there's still a, a lot to uncover. Um, you know, uh, a couple of days ago, someone made the very obvious point that obviously, if you look at the total of AI developers versus the total of crypto developers, then the former is much, much larger than the latter. So if you can sort of convert more of them to come into crypto and see the benefits of that slide I showed earlier and actually be able to use that like right out of the gate, then uh, we have a lot of growth opportunities there. So yeah, uh, exciting times ahead. Um, really looking forward to the day. And thanks again to everyone who's making this possible. And over to you, right? Yeah. Okay.